Hello and welcome to another video. This video is a continuation from the one previously where we created our very first Bifrost graph and our very first Bifrost effect. And the effect we created was this push deformer. So we've got everything working as we want it to. What this video will focus on is just continuing um, with our graph and see if we can clean things up a little bit by exposing maybe a parameter to the main Maya UI and then also how to package this deformer up into a compound so we can share it uh, to other users or maybe reuse it in another scene entirely. So we have our graph all working fine. Uh, we're very happy with it. Uh, but uh, the problem we've got as well is a slight issue is that it's not exactly very easy to use. Uh, we can't, if we want some people to use this effect, um, how do we uh, make it easier for them? We can't expect people to go into the Bifrost graph every single time or even build this up every single time. Uh, well, the first thing we want to do is make it easier in terms of control. And that's uh, this, this parameter here. There's only one value. Um, so really, we want to put that really up front in front of the user instead of them having to go into the graph editor. Now, the way to do that is to expose a port on the input uh, node here. And we do this by taking this value, which is the value of our push, and just plugging it in there. Now, you'll notice that the value has now opened up a port here, and this port is now available uh, on the actual Bifrost graph object here. So if we just remember this value there, if we go to our channel box, and if you look under the shape section, it's got a value. And if I put in a value here on point six, we can apply the value here. Um, and of course, this is also available in the attribute editor as well under the Bifrost uh, graph shape node, extra attributes. There's our value and it works exactly the same way. OK, so that works fine. And of course, now it's been exposed in the attribute editor and also the channel box. We can plug in all kinds of stuff here just as we would any other value and property inside the My UI. So this really opens things up now for an artist to just play around with that. They can keyframe the effect if they want to, use a set-driven key, plug in expressions, do whatever they want. So that's good, but we I'm not happy with the name uh, value. It's not very um, intuitive. So this changed that, and we changed it just by uh, highlighting it and going right mouse click, rename port, and we can choose this to say to say push value and that's it and of course you change it there it changes it in the ui as well and also the attribute editor so everything's now uh, connected up into the ui and this is a lot better and certainly something that i want to now distribute so now we've got this how do we how do we distribute this to um other users or how do we just save it so that we can reuse it ourselves in another scene now, there's a couple of ways of doing it and it really depends on the type of effect that you're doing so we'll deal with the first one and that's the um, published graph now, this is useful for publishing big and complicated graphs in larger scenes uh, so this is very simple so it's a little bit overkill but what this will do this will save it into a location with that can be accessed by the Bifrost browser so the browser is a really good way of creating a library of effects that you can use for yourself or even maybe distribute. Um, so this is what the published graph actually does. If we select it, um, uh, published graph, this box now appears. So we can change the name of the graph entirely. We haven't bothered so far. We just kept it at the uh, default name. So that's fine. We've now got two options to do graph namespace and browser category. So we'll deal with browser category first. And what this does, this allows us to choose our own category if we want to, or we can place it into an existing one. Um, and you can see the ones there that reflect the same ones that are in the actual browser. Now, the namespace, the, all, graphs, all graphs need a namespace. And there's a drop down menu here, and it also puts it into these subcategories as well. And these correspond with what's available um, when you hit the tab key in your graph. So let's just cancel that for a second. If we tab this, you can see, look, I can go to File, Geometry, and there's a list of nodes. I go Geometry, Query, and then everything there. And I can even go for, these can go into, there's usually two. There's, there's Modeling and then Strands, Points, whatever. And you can place it into whatever one you want, or even add your, add your own one. Um, so it, you've really got the flexibility. 
the other thing you can do you can put an author's name if you want you can put a description as to what it is and then there's some really cool things here you can add a thumbnail and again you can point that thumbnail from anywhere really uh, wherever you if you've got a repository of thumbnails that you use for stuff then use one of those and it will appear inside the browser um, you can do a markdown file for documentation and i'll come to that in a moment and then you can also do an example scene and this is really handy because um some people would often overlook this in the browser just cancel that for a second inside the bifos browser you can import these effects but for some of them not all of them if you were to click on any one of these um say you got arrow colors there but then if you if you click on dry ice this option appears here in the bottom left corner and what this will do is that you've got a choice if i just select this one i can import the graph into my scene into this current scene i've got open um, same as i can do if i select this one here however there's another option where i can actually open it in an entirely new example scene so what autodesk have done is they've taken this effect and put it into a scene with some demo data and so on and so on and it's usually what's depicted here um, in, in the thumbnail so you know it's it's really good because then you can see the effects applied in some kind of context uh, and that might help you better understand um, how it can be used so it's a really good option to have uh, so again you can create a whole new i could create a whole new scene with a whole new bunch of assets save it out somewhere and then all i need to do is part of this publish is point this browser to that file and it will be recorded on the publish it could be a .ma.mb file doesn't matter and then of course that option will appear in the bifrost browser so these options here materials if you've got any materials connected in which we haven't done yet uh, and we can always do in another video then you can include it in part of this publish and that relates to this one here where it says you save side sidecar files and what this basically does is that this will save uh, all the related files to this compound uh, so to this graph uh, in the same common folder whereas this one here will save it into autodesk default folders um, so again this is all explained in the, doc in the documentation you can see that when i change it it will change the actual um, default location so i'm just going to leave it as that and then finally you get a box here which is like a um, like a feedback so it's telling me that the, the compound or the graph will be written to an entirely new file if there was an existing file there with the same name it would tell me here and say it's going to be updated or it will save it um, adjacent to it so anyway you can publish that there so that's the first way of publishing it and this is really good for big complex graphs the other way to uh, publish this is to create a compound which is basically that encapsulates the effect in a graph under one node into like a container and then that can be also saved and shared in the same way uh, and that's really very simple to do all we do is we select all the nodes that we want to encapsulate which is going to be these because these these nodes here these six nodes they are basically performing the effect uh, the input here and the output they're default anyway so we don't need to include those uh, so once we've got these selected you just go to create compound and this creates this compound and again you can uh, you can rename it uh, you can even change these ports here as well uh, etc and you can also go back into it so anytime you see a node in your bifrost graph with this icon it means it's a compound which means you can double click it and go straight back into it and it'll look a bit jumbled at first sometimes depending on your view but you can quickly move these things around and decipher it and then you can just explore it so if you want to do this with any other nodes it's a really good way of just working out what's going on here and of course you can move them copy them paste them um, do whatever you want really so you can repurpose all the existing compounds that are inside bifrost and you'll notice here on the uh, graph editor you've got an extra little tab here so anytime you just go back to the main uh, graph and then there's your compound now if you don't like this and go well actually i don't want to group these just yet i haven't quite finished i want to do something else um, we can then uh, ungroup it or explode it and you choose this by going to the edit menu explode compound and that gets everything back to what it was before now before we group them together um, there's something i want to do and that's use maybe a backdrop and a backdrop's a good way of annotating nodes or grouping nodes into a particular area that you want to really uh, maybe convey some information 
uh, especially if you're going to be handing this over to somebody and you're not there to explain everything. Uh, so an example would be, uh, let's create a backdrop. So create backdrop and you get this uh, option. Now, the reason why it's pinged over there is because I had the output node selected. So I'm just going to undo that. Um, so anytime I've got a node selected like so, it will create the backdrop around it. If I'm just going to have um, nothing selected, it just creates a floating square and I can put I can put it wherever I want. If I just do this, it will automatically create the backdrop around it. And what that basically means is that when I move the backdrop, it will move the nodes that are contained within it. But of course, I can change this out at any time. Uh, I can even take these nodes and take them outside the backdrop as well. Now, once I've got this here, um, it's really easy. I can double click this little triangle here and maybe change the color of it if I want to. Um, that's easily done. And then if I double click inside the, the space itself, the border becomes dotted line. And I can just put some text here like so. And I'll just put um, get data here. Double click and that's all done. And again, you could use it for grouping. So for example, if I wanted to sort of say, well, these uh, the multiply effect here, and maybe I want to expand on it later on and I haven't decided what to do yet. So what I'll do is I'll take that out. And you can do something like that. And then once you're ready, uh, select all of these uh, and just create compound. And of course, that will if I go back into it, it will retain it all. So even though it might look a bit jumbled, the nodes still stay within their backdrop. But that, that's really handy. So now we've done this, let's think about how we publish it. We want to make a couple of changes first. First off, I don't like the name of the compound, so let's change it. And we'll just call it my first push pop. That's all good. And I don't like the name of this output. Uh, port here so I'm just going to right click this rename it and just call it results okay I'm happy with that but now I need to publish it and it's really simple again same menu as before select the node you want and go to create or say publish my push my first push op you get a smaller option now so uh, again it gives you an idea of the location it's going to save it to which is your C drive uh, by default anyway C drive users username Autodesk Bifrost compounds and then your uh, JSON file which is your compound will be there um, give it a category namespace so again this will refer to where you want to put it in amongst all your stuff so again there's nothing here so I'm going to create my own one um, so oops didn't we need to do that so let's do this and I'll put zero C and then I'll just call this test, test compounds. Compound name, I'm happy with that. Um, so it's telling me straight away, I've got an invalid namespace. So please change the namespace to use only alphanumeric characters. So I'm doing something wrong there. Um, so what have I got uh, wrong here? And what I've got wrong here is um, the namespace. So again, put an underscore there, there we go. So now I'll say the compound will be written to a new file. So I've got no conflicts, just click publish and that's it, it should be there. So I do tab, there's my category, test compounds, and there it is, and I can just pull it back up. Now, when I've retrieved it, it will automatically append a name because I've already got one here with that name so you can't have uh, two objects with the same name now i can sort of go into the compound now but if i try and change this i get an error down here it says this compound is not editable and it'll say not editable it's been referenced i can i can move things around um, to some extent i can look at it but i can't do anything with it so what happens if i want to maybe change that and you'll notice it's got a little diamond next to it as well so this I want to make this compound editable. I want to go in there and change it and maybe resave it to a different name or maybe enhance it. Um, what do I do? Well, it's really simple again. Go to the edit menu in your graph editor and it's got edit make compound editable. And when you do that, that will now change. And now I can go into this and I can move things around without any conflict and do whatever I want. Uh, but if I don't want to do that, I can just click, click this and just delete it. 
so that's all fine now another thing you can do with this as well is you can add, add some documentation to it and this is where things get a little bit uh, tricky but it's all very uh, easy to do it's all about finding out what uh, information is available and what i'm talking about is that if i double click any one of these this get point normal this information file here now this is comes about because this node has a markdown file associated with it so there's a get point normal json file and also there's a get point normal dot markdown file a markdown is a very common um, text format for doing markups and documentation it's perfect really it's easy to use and easy to understand and it's ideal for these types of situations so what do we do now in order to maybe add some documentation to my own compound so that when people use it i can provide some information for them so they know what they're doing so how do we add documentation to our compound well first off uh, the quickest and easiest way to do it is to find an existing markdown file from amongst the uh, autodesk uh, defaults so if we go to your directories here so if you go to your c drive program files autodesk bifrost the maya version the bifrost version bifrost resources biff docs enu for english and you'll have all these markdown files and they'll correspond with all the nodes that have markdown files to it and if you select one like i've got here you can see it in a preview pane now if this doesn't work for you in a preview pane there's a reason for this and it's probably because you don't have something installed now what you can do um, you can download something from microsoft called microsoft power toys and this is a free um, set of extensions and tools for windows and they've got some really cool stuff in it and it's a github repository so it's completely free and they're constantly updating it some really good stuff here so you've got you can got a built-in color picker you can do uh, more uh, elaborate zones for your your uh, display and docking you've got a keyboard manager an image resizer built in without having to go to an application but one of the things they do have is a file explorer add-on and one of them is markdown previews so that um, you can use the windows preview pane to see what the markdown file actually looks like so um, quick side note check out power toys there's some really good stuff here it's completely free and i'm, I'm more than certain there's some stuff here that you're going to want to uh, have installed on your uh, machine by default so we can see here that when you click it it gives you an idea of what's contained in the actual markdown file and exactly how it works and the markdown file's got to be the same name as the actual um, compound if i find the compound that i saved out here it is my push up bot json so what i need to do is i need to get a compound that's basically the same name as that so the quickest and easiest way in terms of formatting is to basically take an existing one here and copy it over and then change the contents of it so if you take this one here this is nice and simple let's just take this copy that into there and now we're just going to rename the markdown file to the same name as the uh, as the as the compound that's fine and then of course obviously this is only a preview you can't do it any editing so what we'd need to do now is use a text-based editor so i use um notepad plus plus so let's click that notepad plus plus there we go and i've actually got a preview plugin installed as well to do markdown so again whatever i do here i can see it live on the panel and it's a really good way of uh, doing um documentation because it's very simple to use if you use different hashtags and uh, italics it will do it in bold type italic and all that kind of stuff i'm not going to go down all the kind of coding for markdown it is actually very easy to use and there's tons of documentation out there online for you to look at as well um, so it's a really simple thing to use but first thing we can make some changes straight away so let's change the main title and just put my first push up or deformer that's that and we can save that and then we can put in a description and just say you know, this is my first by frost deformer we can see that we've got the actual text there so and then just change it to wherever you want really so you can see here that the 
two hashtags are, are a larger heading and then the third uh, three hashtags is basically like a lower um, a lower heading as well so you can begin to see how it's structured and all i'm doing is just following the basic same um template that was already there so i'm just going to quickly tidy this up and put the information i want and then we'll move on to the next step okay so we're done now we've just made a few uh corrections we can see the uh the preview here so i've got inputs to mesh plug in your mesh here and the push value is going to be like value of amount of deform you want to apply to the object uh, so that's really that's really it nothing uh, too special there and, and the file's been saved and i'm now ready to go so that should be basically fine however we're not done yet and what we now need to do is we now need to make sure that our compound is actually connected to this markdown file so how do we do that so now we want to make sure that our compound that we saved out is going to recognize the markdown file that we've created for it and this is where things get a little bit tricky for some but um it works very well and again i had to look this up in the documentation so it's all there it's all very um uh, searchable but i'm just going to talk you through it now so what we need to do this is the json file so this is your compound so it's so again if you really are into debugging stuff you can see there it is that's how it all it's just a simple text file it's so small you could literally email it um now what we want to do we want to find essentially the first bit of the um the metadata so we've got a name and a metadata bit there so this is where we want to be so i'm just going to add a new line and then the uh, brackets and now we want to add the following text meta name and this is going to be documentation next line is going to be the meta type and then finally we want to put in the meta value which is uh, essentially the location or the name of the markdown file okay so that looks about right um those so it's these three sections that we've added in just these three lines uh, and they go underneath the metadata and of course make sure you close it off with the brackets as well now there's just one thing to be mindful here is that this line here is a relative path a, a relative file so it's going to recognize that um the md file is is saved with the compound but if you put your md files in a whole different location then you're going to have to update this uh, accordingly to make sure the path is there so just something to be mindful of but that might be a little bit too advanced for you right now it doesn't matter um you should be able to do uh, you should be able to uh, keep the md file with the compound and you're pretty much good to go so now we're done we're just going to save it now so that saved that uh, compound back out again and we can essentially uh, close this and now in order for it to be picked up we'll have to restart Maya again and then we should be able to load the compound back in and see our documentation okay so I've rebooted Maya now uh, so what we can do is we can just bring up uh, Bifrost graph create graph and whilst um, it, uh, before I rebooted, I took the, the time to maybe make a few little changes as well. Um, and I republished everything. So essentially, it's now tab. There's my category, test, my push op. And there it is. Um, and of course, now if you look into the info, we've now got the markdown is being uh, looked at. So you've got this is my first Bifos deformer. Input is the mesh. Plug in your mesh here. Push value, value amount of um value of amount of deform should word that maybe a little bit better but you get the whole idea um value of the amount i think that should say you want to apply to the object connect this to the input node to expose port in my ui uh, and then the result uh, so that's all fine so we can see how that all works now um so we can get rid of this uh, actually no we can bring this up it's uh, we don't need to do that so let's get rid of the input node it's bringing another object we could do another torus because that's all perfectly fine um there we go uh middle mouse click that in there we go Check the mesh click the result should be a bifrost object there now there it is 
move it and then of course we can now do the push value but of course we can do that now but of course follow the instructions connect it to the input node if we do that that will now appear on our attribute editor just there push value and also in our channel box so there we have it that's how you can publish a node add some annotation as well remember this is not editable so we can go in there and look there's all our uh, backdrops that we actually added as well and of course if you want to we can edit this and make this editable and we can now expand upon it and rebuild it so that's what we're going to do in the next video we're going to continue this little bit of a uh, small journey into Bifrost and in the next video we'll look at how we can add some custom attributes to or custom property to our source mesh and then see if we can get that into our Bifos graph in order to allow greater control for our push operator. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.